we haven't met, I'm Brad Hager, um, and I'll be uh, trying to keep the second uh, half of the afternoon on schedule. Uh, I had some, uh, uh, two, uh, I, I had interactions with Ted uh, twice in my career, and both times they were very important, so I just thought I'd spend a couple minutes talking about them. Uh, the first time I met Ted, uh, I was a graduate student in this uh, liberal arts school down the street here. Uh, it had a small geophysics program. Uh, in my second year, uh, the entire geophysics faculty, in their well-coordinated way, went on sabbatical. So, uh, <laughs> leaving with the suggestion that maybe I should uh, see if I could uh, take any courses at MIT while they were gone. So, um, with uh, great trepidation, I came over here and I took uh, inverse theory from <laughs> Ted Madden and, uh, and Kay Oppie. And uh, it was a scary experience. I mean, coming <laughs> in here, uh, you know, from this irresponsible crew down the street to these guys who were the gods of geophysics, you know, and, and you know, how can I you know, be in their presence? And then there were the students, people like Earl, you know, uh, who had access to the gods, and, and I'm supposed to be in the same class as them. It was, it was really, really frightening. Um, Peter mentioned the virtues of having two teachers in a course. Uh, Kay's part was rather formal and had a lot to do with the mathematics of um, you know, uh, inversion and smoothing and stuff like that. Uh, Ted's was more on how to solve problems. And Ted made a real impression on me that the most important part of an inverse problem is the forward problem. And that's where all the uncertainty is, how you, how you cast the forward problem. So, um, I remember the term paper. It's the only term paper I wrote that I remember. And uh, what I did was a, uh, a nonlinear inversion of the uh, viscosity structure of the mantle underneath Scandinavia as constrained from post-glacial rebound data. It's a horribly nonlinear problem because you don't know the thickness of the layers. You've got exponential variations in viscosity. Uh, and so I decided the way to do it was to hit it with a sledgehammer of Monte Carlo inversion. So after this great uh, exposition of inverse theory from Kayaki, I turned in this, you know, Monte Carlo, uh, <laughs> expecting to fail the course. But I got an A, which uh, gave me some confidence that, uh, you know, I should do the right thing, whether it was what I had been taught to do or not. And my uh, professors at Harvard, when I saw that I got an A from MIT, decided to treat me uh, seriously as a grad student. <laughs> uh, the second experience was 25 years ago, uh, I had an offer to come and join uh, Ted on the faculty and others on the faculty uh, at MIT. Uh, there was, uh, it was a very attractive place. Uh, brilliant people like Tom Herring, Peter Molnar uh, were here, so it, that was very attractive. But the guy who sealed the deal was Ted, uh, because he told me that I could play on the intramural ice hockey team. <laughs> and I couldn't do that at the small technical school uh, that I was teaching at in Pasadena, California, even though they had the same, uh, the same basketball. They didn't permit the faculty to play on the hockey team. Uh, so uh, I, I came here, I joined Ted on the sixth floor. Uh, it was a great experience seeing Ted interact with his group. He had this very vibrant uh, group of uh, students who great people to be around, even if it would have been nicer if they hadn't dried out their hockey gear in their offices. <laughs> um, I, I, I remember vividly meeting Ted down in the lobby as I pushed the button for the elevator, and Ted gives me this kind of Mona Lisa smile, or maybe it should be a Paul Newman smile, but anyway, he says, hey, let's walk. Um, having you know, known me well enough by then that I had a slight competitive urge, and so I raced Ted up the stairs, and you know the outcome. <laughs> so uh, we, I, I played on the intramural hockey team with Ted. Uh, I, I learned this morning that Ted was actually two times he was playing with these guys in the B League and me in the C League. Uh, but I was the goalie, and when Ted was playing, I got a lot of time to stand around and watch the game and admire uh, Ted's uh, skating style and his, his uh, skills as a uh, defenseman. But I remember one game when we were playing this uh, group of frat boys, you know, obnoxious kids, and they were talking trash to our team and say, oh, what are you doing? You got these two old geezers on the team. <laughs> so I took the puck and passed it to Ted behind our net. Ted kind of wound up and went skating up the ice around every single player on the other side, <laughs> watching them flop on the ice in embarrassment, including the goalie and, uh, and go in for the score. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, when Ted and I were playing goal, when Ted and I were playing on the team, I was goalie, he was skating, we never lost a game. Yeah. But like any inverse problem, <laughs> the answer is not unique. <laughs> uh, but I'm 
I'm sure you have your, uh, I'm sure you have your eight priorities. That's what they have.